Hi, Larry Titus. Thank you again for joining us for our Discipleship Series. It's been an awesome time. I hope you've been able to catch all the series or at least uh, go back and replay some of those that you may have missed. We're on our uh, eighth session, I believe, today. We're going to be talking about the dangers of discipleship training. In every single area of training, there's always dangers. There's always dangers that we take what Jesus intended for good, distort it one way or another, go overboard one way or another, and uh, as soon as it becomes distorted, it, it really can become very, very dangerous. So uh, there's one scripture I want to read sort of as the basis for all of this, uh, and it's found in Philippians, the second chapter. Verse 3, do nothing out of jealousy or selfish ambition or vain conceit or rivalry. Don't do anything for self-motivation. Uh, and this actually leads up to one of the more profound chapters of the entire Bible, chapter number 2 of Philippians, from verse number 1 to verse 10. is just profound beyond imagination. But that's not my theme for today, except this one part is. And that is, what is your motivation? My motivation is, number one, because Jesus said to do it. I should be doing it. That's number one motivation because that means obedience. I'm doing what Jesus said to do. My second motivation is really in discipleship is not for me at all. It's not how many uh, skins I can have on my belt, how many scalps I can have on my belt. It's not about me having rewards in my crown or for me to brag. Uh, so there's no boasting involved here. It's not a matter of, oh, look what I've done. It's a matter of how can I give myself away so that others may be released in their call and who their God-given abilities are and, and what God has called them to be, to release them in the grand design for their lives. So this is a major scripture. So I want to talk to you about some of the dangers. That is number one, is what is my, what is my motivation? Am I trying to bring people under my control? Am I trying to bring people under my influence for the purpose of me using them? If I use people, I always abuse people. That's just the way it is. Anytime I use them for selfish motivation, anything that I'm doing, if it is for selfish motivation, it is going to be, it will eventually turn into abuse. That is a given. Uh, but my motivation is I want to see you released in your calling. I want to see you become all that God has intended you to be. And frankly, I don't care if you become much better than me. You know, whenever I minister to my wife, my spouse, that is a major motivation. I want to see her become so great. When I train all my other leaders, I want to see them become so great. And I can give you the names of people that are probably recognizable to you. That, that I've had some form of discipleship training, either small, large, short, or long. But, but I can tell you their names and see what God has done through them through the years. And I think, frankly, God's used them far greater than me. That's my hope. That's my desire. So number, uh, number one is the motivation. I want to see you grow. What is the issue now relating to control? This is a major danger. This is so big. Something inside human nature likes to control others. God doesn't want you to control anybody but yourself. In fact, if you can control yourself, you're going to be doing a great, great job. Just go ahead and try controlling yourself, especially your tongue. So you have conquered everything if you can control your tongue. So God is saying to you, that's, that's James 3, by the way, if you want to know that one. So God is saying to you, I want you to invest in them. It's not about you, it's about them. Don't prefer yourself, prefer them, honor them, pour into them. Don't control them. Don't control them in any way. Don't control them. I also want you to understand you are not the Holy Spirit. So many people try to be, okay, I'm going to tell you what God says. God doesn't want you to tell them what God says. God doesn't want you to give them directives, direction for their lives, tell them what they should do. Train them in the principles of the word of God. Train them to make their own decisions. Somebody will come and say, Larry, what do you think I should do? I say, let me tell you, get into the word of God, pray about it, see what the word says. I can give you principles. I will never give you direction. If I give you direction, I'm going to be responsible for your decision. God has not called me to give you direction. These are just some of the basics. There are dangers. There are dangers involved. And if I do a good job and I make a good disciple of you, instead of you looking like me, you're going to look like Jesus Christ. That's my desire. I don't want you to look at me. I want you to follow me. That's biblical. But I don't want you to look like me. That's unbiblical. I want you to look like Jesus Christ. And if you look like Jesus Christ, you know how to read the word, study the word of God, pray. You're going to be awesome. And I'll say, praise God, I did my job. <laughs>